Hello, hello, hello. This is Carl A. Smith, a.k.a. Dr. Cash, coming to you with our monthly stock market analysis for the month of May 2020. Yes, May has gone just that quickly. Before we jump into our regular monthly update, I do want to just take a short moment, but a very intentional and focused moment to have some focus on a lot of the political unrest that is taking place here in the United States as a result of George Floyd passing away by the hands of U.S. police officers in Minneapolis. So for all those that have been impacted by the protests, as well as the negative aspects of these protests, I do want to send some thoughts as well as some focus and attention. So we do want to have just a quick moment of silence for George and all of his family members. And we'll jump right in, so thank you for that. May is typically a down month on the average for all major indices, but as you can see here, we had some very aggressive movements in price on the upside across the board for all major indices with the Russell leading the pack up just above 9.24% for the month very aggressively. And, and undoubtedly, it may come to a shock to you and certainly has come to a shock to me that our S&P is just off of its all-time highs roughly by about not just a little bit greater than 9% and certainly the NASDAQ, which is just short of about 2% off of its all-time highs. So coming off of the major sell-off that we've had coming back into early February into March as a result of the U.S. impact on the coronavirus and its global impact, we have retraced very, very aggressively and there is a high possibility that we may touch, specifically on the NASDAQ, we may touch, if not breach, the all-time highs again. So very dramatic moves. And certainly over this last month, coming in at just short of eight and three quarters percent up off of its lows of the month. So very focused and very attention gathering on my part specifically, but then also all of the major news organizations are relatively shocked on how negative a lot of the U.S. economic information that's coming out in weekly reports, but the market is absorbing that and the bulls are in full control very aggressively. However, are we at a point where those bulls are going to be looking to take profits and that information that was absorbed is now being looked at as potentially as negative? On the contrary, we've come into a very consistent and a predictable point within gold and gold is looking to kind of stabilize for potential breakouts so we'll take a look at that a little bit as well but wanted to just jump right in as always we'll start off with the s p so you clearly can see we've had a very strong bullish month for the month of may as we stated we have typically in the past have seen typical sales off in may as those wall street traders and the chicago traders begin to initiate their summer plans however in may it was very very bullish coming off of a strong two month if not a three month if you go back toward the latter part of uh, march where the bulls significantly stepped in roughly at that 218 25 level and initiated this most recent bullish run and we have seen us come out of value area and is there an opportunity for the bulls to look at the month of may as a continuation of a bullish move to continually potentially shift us up to touching an all-time high at 339 on the spy etf so this is something we do want to kind of watch out for but from a monthly perspective we are clearly in a bullish trend despite some of the major economic news that's coming out of the U.S. Specifically, one thing we do want to kind of highlight is the unemployment within the United States. So just in this past week, first time jobless claims were increased by 2.1 million, bringing the overall total since the beginning of the, the tracking of it in association with the coronavirus, roughly about 41 million jobless claims have been submitted in the United States. So that's a major, major number. However, the market continues to absorb those numbers and we do see some potential opportunity for the bulls at some point to look at taking some profits and locking that in 
as we move forward within the rest of June. However, clearly over the last two months, we've been in a bullish trend. Now, toward the latter part of last week, we did see a little bit of a sell off, but the bulls have stepped in very consistently to look for opportunities to do a repurchase to potentially move us to a higher level. Now, as we move into our normal weekly charts, uh, you can see that we did see a little bit of a sell off in the beginning of the week and a little bit here and there throughout the week as those economic numbers have pulled in. But if we take a look at that sell off came to a very specific point, roughly about $294 level, which is the point of control over the yet last year, which is the highest amount of volume that trans transpired during that time frame. excuse me. And the bull stepped in and look at it as a buy point to continue to push us up just that much higher. Now, do I feel that we in the next month we may touch that 327 level? Personally, I don't. However, anything that can happen and we don't want to try to figure out, well, why is the market doing what it's doing? We do want to be able to react to what it's doing, but we don't want to try to guess and speculate on what is it doing because the market can be irrational in some instances it can be somewhat predictable but then on the average uh, it can be a little bit irrational and our job is just to interpret the data that's presented to us and then make trades and investments accordingly but again as we saw on the monthly chart coming off of these lows in the latter part of march we are seeing very strong pushes upward from a bullish nature and if we look at it, we are pretty tight within a, a tight trading range uh, on a channel. So if we do kind of mark out, you know, where we have been on this month and we do want to be able to see, are we kind of following into some type of channel? And is there an opportunity to anticipate where we would be able to uh, enter and or exit a particular trade. So if we do look out, we do see this red line between these two blue lines here is a 50% of that channel. So we do wanna watch that as a potential area over the next month for the bulls to kind of take some type of opportunity to sell off going into the latter part of the summer. I personally anticipate a little bit of a pullback toward the front side of this coming week and maybe potentially going sideways on the, on the S&P 500. Now the NASDAQ as we shift in a few moments is significantly stronger in its momentum and is just less than 2% off of its all time high. So we do want to kind of mark out a, a little bit of a zone and watch that moving forward as we continue out over the next couple of weeks, we may potentially come up to that roughly $315 level and look for some opportunities to kind of sell off. And that does coincide with a little bit of a low volume node that we'll just map out for you on a visual to kind of showcase it and watch it moving forward as a potential opportunity for a, a sell zone. And that does map in roughly right at that $315 amount level. And we'll watch that in, in accordingly now that would push us up to the the middle third of the overall value and that could be an opportunity for a little bit of a retracement as you know our value area is kind of marked out here in these teal purplish lines so we'll roughly move into that higher third and that could be another opportunity for a sell-off but we do anticipate the front side of this week will be some type of opportunity for the bears to kind of take a short-term control but we're clearly in a bullish trend and we don't want anyone to try to buck that and uh and get run over because we're, we're kind of a little bit irrational in where we're going and we'll move over to the nasdaq and we can kind of see exactly what i'm speaking about if we shift back to the monthly chart that we are right off of our all-time highs and this is very openly amazing to me however it is what it is as we say and this area is an opportunity for us to kind of watch moving forward we are very close and, and if we don't reach or breach that 237 50 area if we'll call it that could be an indication that the the bears are beginning to take a little bit more control and the bulls kind of pulling back as prices get a little bit too high now if front side of the week if we come up touch it and pull back that might be a shorter term pullback because the momentum is very, very strong coming off of 
April and May, and we've clearly closed into that gap zone. So we can look to erase that gap zone, which was filled, and we'll continue to look out if there are opportunities for us to kind of retrace back to the top side of that zone. And that's something that uh, is, is a little bit unpredictable, but as we always state, we'll make adjustments as the information is presented to us and generated to us. And as you can see here on our last weekly candle, I'll call it out for you visually, you can see that the, the bears had control and, and pushed that price all the way down to like the 215 level and there was some significant volume that came in on a bullish nature to pull it pushes up just that much higher and we did breach the high very slightly uh, from last week's high so this also the bulls will see this coming into this upcoming week at least on the nasdaq as a potential carry forward and momentum that this upcoming week first week of june will be bullish as well so something to kind of keep our keep our eye in but the significantly above our moving averages so you do have some momentum a lot of your key larger tech names in regards to uh, facebook amazon netflix all have very positive bullish momentum but the key will be is there an opportunity for the bears to look at the opportunity if they cannot get and breach the high that we have seen most recently going back into the, the latter part of February. This zone here is something that we want to kind of watch out for. Now, if we can't breach that again, that will be something that the, the bears will look for an opportunity to kind of step in. If we move on to our Russell and shift back to our monthly chart and please don't forget to subscribe or like our videos if the information we are sharing with you is helpful or if it's confusing please let us know we can always provide additional insight and guidance our goal is to help educate and provide a little bit of a hypothesis moving forward uh, throughout very key times throughout the month so as we look at the Russell one of the things that we do want to kind of call out is we have moved back into value and have had our monthly close above our value at 136 call it 44 level and that is also a bullish signal as we move back into an area where the majority of the volume at price has taken place over the last three years this is something we do want to identify and call out very specifically an official bullish stance on the russell now that could be a shorter term pullback on the weekly but from a monthly perspective your longer term bigger institutions clearly see that this is an opportunity for them to step in and continue to have their long positions so our next target would be that point of control on the monthly level which is coming in roughly at 153 dollars so that's something we do want to watch as a shorter term target for our monthly traders that this would be our first level for a potential sell or our bulls to exit positions. We do want to mark, mark that out and we'll track that for you over the next four weeks or so. If we shift over to our weekly chart, you can see a little bit easier that we've bounced right off of a number of moving averages, roughly our 50 week moving average, and the, the bear stepped in and began to close this week on a down week. So there is a little bit of uh, schizophrenia, if you will, where the monthly is very bullish but our weekly chart is closing on a bearish signal so there will be a little bit of that push pull toward the front side of the week who will win out that's yet to be determined but we do want to look at it as an opportunity that we are sandwiched right between our 50 and our 20 week moving average and closing the week right on a low volume node so this is something we do also want to kind of carry forward for us but that maps right into our gap zone so we'll just extend it out so you can kind of see it more visually now we did close within that gap and all of those prices have been auctioned which strengthens the overall market but this could be an opportunity uh, on the short term to see if the bears can kind of complete this consistent pattern that we always talk about it seems like every week but on the Russell, this is a, a, a indice that tracks all of our US-based stocks. So this could be where 
the ripple effect of the economic indicators are beginning to showcase themselves as an opportunity. But my hypothesis for the Russell moving forward will be sideways to down, but we could come into a nice trading range over the next few weeks as a little bit more momentum is built for that next leg up. But so the S&P, the NASDAQ are showing solid signs of bullishness but a little bit of a bearishness nature that's been identified over the last week on the Russell. And we'll jump over and take a look at the Dow. As we shift over to Dow, we'll extend our lens out to the three-year monthly chart. And as you can see, very similar to what we saw on the S&P 500, we have this larger megaphone pattern that is continuing to oscillate back and forth. and this is an indication that the market is looking for a range of prices so it's trying to auction all prices because the market is is kind of balancing out all of this information that it is receiving however we cannot predict how the market will absorb information now it is and should be something that this negative information that's coming out of the u.s should cause a little bit more panic now that's the key should but the market can do anything that she wants to do. So what we have to do, we'll continue to reiterate this and repeat it so that it is absorbed that the market is going to do what it's going to do. Our job is to not predict. Our job is to help come up with hypotheses to be able to adjust based upon the information that is presented. So clearly we have closed this month on the Dow on a positive and a bullish nature and roughly a gain of about 6% month over month. So this is something that we can, can continue to watch as we traverse towards the top side of the value area. Roughly about that $270 amount is an opportunity for us to look at for our first target for bears to step in on the monthly chart. So we'll continue to watch the Dow on the monthly as we've continued and closed above our port of control, roughly about that $248 amount level as an opportunity to see us continue up higher on the monthly. Now, as we shift over to the weekly, you can see we still have a little bit of a gap zone over the last few weeks or so where things have continued to kind of balance themselves out and we just had a very nice breakout off of that $258 level that will map out for you here visually for the gap zone. So this is something that we will continue to see if the first sign of trading in this week, there could be some pullback to try to close this gap and come in off of our 20 period, excuse me, 20 week moving average as a continuation of a bullish move upward. Now I do believe that that will take places that will try to close this gap over the next few days, but then that could be the pullback that we anticipated for a continuation moving higher as we have come off of a multi-week kind of trading range, if I call it out here. So there is momentum where there's a little bit of an accumulation that's probably taking place within this zone to push us up to, to higher prices. Now, if we do see continuation from a bullish side on the front side of the week, our next target would be that $270 level as a potential for individuals taking some profit. So on the Dow, we don't track the Dow as closely as we do the other three majors, but it is a key component that is looked at from a lot of individuals. So we do want to kind of present that out to you on a regular basis. And we'll close out today, taking a look at gold and seeing where we are there. And We'll move back to the monthly just to kind of see where we are. And you see that we came in and touched our top side of a trend line this past month at and created a, a high over the last few years at 164 and was not able to continue to maintain those prices. So we do look at an opportunity for gold to move in a sideways nature to up. So our skew will be sideways to up over the entire month and as we look at the weekly you can see it a little bit deeper in, in regards to detail we are somewhat still in a little bit of a trading range 
with gold as well. So look at this over the last few weeks is a little bit of an accumulation to potentially push us that much higher. However, we were not able to create a new high over this last week. So we do look potentially for the next two weeks or so, I'll go out on the limb and say over the next two weeks, we see gold kind of going sideways to a little bit up moving forward. Now we do hold a number of positions on gold longer term from an option perspective and all of those trades are very profitable. So we're happy to, to report that. However, we do want to prepare ourselves for something that could be something that's unexpected. So we might look at taking some profits over the next few weeks to kind of scale out of a little bit of a gold position if we can't continue to push higher toward the top side of this this channel that's kind of mapping itself out very visually here a number of times so that's something that we do want to watch and that's roughly about that 165 170 dollar level as an opportunity for us so a lot of things that are going on in the united states right now a lot of individuals are very focused on that including myself so this month's video, I'm, I'm a little distracted in regards to my mindset, so I'll go ahead and apologize if I'm not as clear as I am on a consistent basis, but I did want to take the time and take the focus to really convey a little bit of additional information in regards to where we're going financially in, in the U.S. stock market. So as with always, it is your money and it's under your control. Don't hesitate to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and leave some comments let me know if you're enjoying what you're hearing if you'd like us to review certain equities or stocks please uh, don't hesitate to, to leave some information because my job is to provide as much guidance as possible and have a little bit of fun at the same time now as stated again i thank you for your time and we'll see you on the other side take care